Maxtivity artists. I hope you had a great break and I hope you're all ready to stop, drop, and art. It's time for another fun art project. And today we're doing something really different than what we've done in the past, paper mache. Now don't get scared. It's gonna be pretty easy. You just have to follow the instructions. So what are we making out of paper mache? Well, we're making a cat. It's gonna be about this tall and it could be, I guess it could be a dog, but I'm gonna make a cat. It just depends on the ears really. So you're gonna need a few things. Might have to go digging in the recycling barrel. That's where I found this. So you're gonna need some kind of empty plastic bottle. It could be a water bottle, could be an old salad dressing bottle, ketchup bottle, something not exactly the shape, but just a bottle about this size, maybe a little smaller. You're going to need some newspaper. Now, if your family doesn't have newspaper lying around, paper bags could work or old wrapping paper or just some kind of paper. And you're going to need flour and water. Oh, and some masking tape. If you don't have masking tape, I suppose scotch tape might work. So that's a lot of stuff to go and get, but I will wait for you. All right, I'm gonna take some newspaper, probably one or two pieces. If I don't have that, I'm gonna take paper bag, something that I can crunch down. I'm crunching it into a ball, see this? I crunched it into a ball about the size of a big grapefruit. I don't wanna smash it so tight that it's tiny. I want it to be about the size of a big softball or a grapefruit, okay? Then I'm taking my tape and I'm gonna put my tape just loosely, not super tight, just loosely around that ball to hold it so it doesn't fall apart. Just gonna put one going that way. And maybe I should have one going this way and one crossing the other way. Cause I want that ball to stay in that ball shape. But like I said, you don't need it to be super tight. Ooh, I can just do that. So I basically have just a softball shape loosely held together with one strip of tape going this way and one strip of tape going that way, okay? I don't need to encase the entire thing in tape. Now, this is the head. And this is the body. So I need to attach the head to the body before I start doing my paper mache. So I'm gonna use some tape and I'm gonna just lightly attach the head to the bottle. It doesn't have to be super, super attached. I just don't want it falling off when I'm putting the paper mache on. So I'm gonna put See how I kind of attach it to the bottle here? That'll probably do it, really. I put two pieces of tape on and then I made sure that they were snug right underneath the head, snug to the, to the neck. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. Now it's time to make the paper mache. So I've already got a little bit of paper mache left over because yesterday I made some. And what it is, is just flour and water. There are lots of ways to make paper mache. You can actually go to the store and buy paper mache mix, but there's no need to do that because all you really need is flour and water. And you make it kind of so it's like a pancake-y kind of. I bet you've all made pancakes before. The batter's kind of pancake thickness before you cook the pancake, you know, pancake batter kind of. So I'm guessing you could probably start with like, why don't you start with, hmm, 
I'll make a little bit more. Let's say you start with a cup of flour and maybe, maybe half a cup of water. And then you take a, a whisk or a spoon or something, a fork, and you stir that up. And if it seems too thick, like this is kind of, this is, this is almost like cookie dough. Okay, this is too thick. It's goop, goop, goop. That's a little too thick. I think I need to add some more water. So maybe I'll add another cup, half a cup of water. Let's see what that does. Hmm. So maybe it's one to one. Maybe it's one cup of flour. I didn't, I should have measured this out before, but I always just kind of do it by feel. I never really follow exact measurements. I just kind of add the, the water until it's to the consistency of pancake mix. So I think that's probably about right. One cup of flour to one cup of water. You could start with that. Yeah, that's better. That's more like cake mix or pancake mix. That's what we want. Boy, I've got all kinds of paper mache now. I'm gonna have to make an army of cats to use it all up. So, don't need my flour anymore. Ugh. Now what I need are scraps of paper. So I'm using newspaper and these are some scraps. I just tore these, I just tore scraps of newspaper, but a lot of people like to cut them with scissors. So you wanna cut like approximately one inch strips of um, paper. Now you could use an old grocery bag or you could use newspaper or you could just use, if, if all you have is copy paper, I guess you could use that too. So just strips about like this. If they're a little fatter, that's okay, but you don't want them super long because then they're harder to work with. And I, I think I like the newspaper because it's thinner and so it bends better. This is really stiff. So if you have newspaper, that's best. If not, you could use whatever paper you have. Like I said, maybe maybe wrapping paper or old printer paper, scrap paper. So what I'm gonna do now, I wanna make sure that my cameraman, camera woman, um, can see all this. Can you see all of this, camera woman? <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to take one piece of my scrap and maybe take this out so it's not in the way. Take out the whisk. I'm gonna put it over here. And this is the messy part. You gotta like being messy. I'm putting my scrap into the mix and I'm just using my fingers to kind of, whoops, rub the excess off. And I'm gonna lay it on, lay it on there. And I am just gonna keep doing that. So I put the scrap in there, kind of use my two fingers to kind of scissor off the extra stuff and then I lay it on there. I'm gonna cover this entire thing with wet newspaper. And I wanna make sure that I get, I connect the neck and the head. So this piece is gonna go on the head and the neck. I gotta really smooth it on because that way the head will be securely connected to the neck when it dries. Doing that over here too, smoothing it down. Some of my pieces are just chunks, but it doesn't really matter what shapes they are. So this is gonna take us a little while. We wanna make sure we get those pieces nice and wet so they stick and stick them on there all around the neck and under the chin. See, I'm just putting them on and smoothing them on. I wanna cover all the dry spots. I guess I should do that where you can see, huh? Let's see, it might be good to move Oh, maybe not. Hmm. So I'm covering all the spots that are dry, the whole thing. 
Don't want any holes. And I'm gonna cover the whole bottle. That's the body. So, keep going here. I once made a paper mache dragon head. First I made the armature, that's the bottles and stuff underneath, that's kind of the skeleton. I made the armature out of pop bottles and milk jugs and stuff, it was pretty big. And I did the same thing I'm doing now, I just used water and flour and newspaper cut up and I covered the whole thing. And um, I used marbles for eyes, that was kind of cool. And I had that hanging on the wall in my house for years. And it, it was just fine. It lasted just fine. No mice or bugs ever came to eat it. I was a little worried about that because mice and bugs like flour, but that never happened. And it was just fine until it fell off the wall one day because it was kind of heavy and it broke. And I felt really bad that I had to throw it away, but maybe someday I'll make another dragon head to hang on the wall because it was kind of, it was kind of cool. So paper mache, you can you can do all kinds of sculptures with paper mache. You don't have to have clay to create a sculpture. Now when I do the bottom, I'm just gonna go to the edge. I'm not gonna put the paper under the bottom. I'm just gonna put it, let's see if you can see this. I'm just kind of putting it right to the bottom of the bottle, but I'm not really going under the bottom. Cause I don't want it to stick. It might stick too much to the, uh, to the table. I mean, that's not a big deal. I guess it's not a huge deal, but I didn't want mine to stick to the table so much. So I'm just doing that. And then once, oh my gosh, this was crazy. Once the school my kids were going to had a book fair and they wanted it to be a, a theme of like a enchanted forest theme. And they wanted me to help decorate. And I made an entire tree out of paper mache and chicken wire. It was a good thing I had a big basement, so I had a big area to work in, but I made a big giant tree. I think it was like 12 feet tall and six feet around out of chicken wire and, and paper mache. Boy, was that a huge mess and it was really heavy, but it was cool. It was cool. I'm not sure I would do that again. We're getting there. Look at this. Okay. Look at almost my entire almost my entire bottle, I think my entire bottle is covered with newspaper and paper mache. Let's see the neck. The neck is covered. Oh, but I see right here, there's a big spot that I missed. I need to cover that with newspaper. So on the head, I'm gonna get this wet and I'm gonna put this. Now it's so wet now, they don't even have to get my other, my new pieces that covered in slop because there's so much slop already on the the sculpture and it's just kind of sticking. I'm still getting them a little bit wet. Let's see, let me make sure. Oh, there's a spot there too. Gotta cover that. Let's see, uh, I think there's kind of a spot here. Let's get that. Covering up all the holes in the head that might be remaining so that it's all covered pretty, pretty smoothly. Pretty completely covered. Hmm. I think there's kind of a hole back here. I want to cover that up. And then we're going to do ears. So I'm just sticking that on. All right, now I have to decide what I want the front of my head to be now. I think this should be the face. We're gonna put some ears on right here. And I'm just gonna take a scrap of my paper. I folded it in half. Folded it in half and got it a little bit of my um, paper mache on it. 
And then I'm gonna kind of fold it like an ear shape. See how it's kind of a triangle shape, but there's still some down here? Just however you wanna do it. And then I'm just gonna stick it on like an ear. Look at that. Here's another scrap of paper. I'm gonna get it, um, a little paper mache on it, not too much. Let's move that off. And I'm gonna do the same thing, kind of double it so it's a little thicker than just one, one thick. And mm, kind of make a little point there and put it on like that so that they stand up. Now that ear is kind of sad, isn't it? One ear is bigger than the other. You know what though, that gives my cat character. I kind of like it, it's kind of funny. So if you want to make a dog, I guess you would have maybe bigger ears or ears that flop down like a dog. I'm not sure quite how we would do that. Let's see. I guess you could um, take some newspaper, but I would I would double it so it's not just one thin, one thick. And I guess you would kind of shape it like a dog ear. That kind of looks like a dog ear, right? And then you could just stick it on like that if you wanted to. But it's, oh, it's sliding off. Maybe if I put it up a little higher. But that would make yours a dog. Okay, so this is my cat's ears, his head, his neck, his body. What about a tail? Well, why not? So I'm, my hands are just covered. I don't wanna use my scissors. I'm just gonna tear a piece of newspaper. Need kind of a big piece this time. Get out of there, messy. All right, I'm very sloppy. And, um, that's one of the fun things about art, is you get to be messy. So I kind of am gonna roll this up in a tail shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just kind of rolled up with a point on the end. And then I'm just gonna stick it down here onto my cat. There's a tail. And if it doesn't wanna stay, maybe I just need to lean it against something while it's drying, like that maybe, so it doesn't fall off but when it dries, it will stick. Okay, now here's the rub. We have to let it dry. And it might take overnight, but once it's dry, you can paint it and it'll be really cool. So yesterday, I made a cat similar to this one. I had a ketchup bottle instead of a juice bottle, so it's gonna be a little shorter, a little different shape. But I made a cat similar to this one yesterday and it's all dry, so I am going to paint that one and you can follow along with me, you can watch, and then you can do yours tomorrow. Or I suppose if you put it in front of a fan, it might dry in a few hours, but probably you just wanna let it sit in a place where it won't get bumped and just let it sit. And by tomorrow, it'll be dry enough for you to paint. I'm gonna go wash my hands and then we're going to paint a cat. So I have some acrylic paints that I put on my palette here. And I have a fairly wide paintbrush. And I'm gonna paint my whole cat orange to start out with, but I'm, I'm gonna leave some empty spaces where his eyes are gonna go. So, first, well, I'm just using acrylic paint. You could use tempera paint, probably not watercolor though. Probably acrylic or tempera. So here we go. away painting the cat and I didn't leave places for his eyes but that's okay we're gonna let the paint dry just a little bit and then we're gonna paint some different colors on him a face and some stripes but I think I better let him dry just a little 
or it'll, it'll all just get all muddled together and be sloppy. So let's, this is a project where you have to take a few breaks. So um, you can make your cat whatever color you want. It doesn't have to be orange, but go ahead and paint your cat and then let him dry just a little bit. So my cat is mostly dry and I'm gonna go ahead and give him some eyes. So I'm gonna dip a medium sized brush in some white paint and I'm just gonna paint some white circles where I want his eyes to be. He can have really big eyes or he can have tiny eyes. It's up to you. I put one white circle there and I think I'm gonna be kind of funny, like one ear is bigger than the other. Well, it's not that bad, actually. That was the other cat. I'm gonna make one eye a little bit bigger than the other. So I'm gonna outline them with black later, but sometimes it's hard to paint really round circles on paper mache because it's a little uneven and bumpy, but that's okay. All right, so there's two white circles for eyes. And, you know, I could put a little white inside of his ears if I wanted to, or pink. I think I'll put a little white inside of each ear, just a little bit. Just inside there, just a little, like that. Okay, now let's see. I'm gonna need a thinner brush to do the details, skinny brush. So I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet. I'm gonna get some black paint on there. Sometimes if your paint is too gloppy, it's hard to do details. So you might wanna get a little bit of water, mix a little water into your black paint before you start. I'm just gonna give him a little triangle, a little upside down triangle for a nose. Of course, you can make yours pink if you want or brown. I'm making mine black and then I'm gonna give him the the little kitty cat mouth that we all know and love. And maybe a few little dots, three on each side maybe. We'll give them whiskers later. Okay, let's see. I, I want those white eyes to dry a little bit more before I go ahead and put the pupils in and outline them. So I'm gonna take my medium brush again gonna dry it off a little bit it's kind of wet and I'm gonna get some a different color for stripes let me give my cat some stripes and I'm gonna give him some blue stripes now we know cats don't really have blue stripes but I thought it'd be kind of fun to have blue stripes on an orange cat and I might leave his belly without stripes and just kind of put stripes on the side I'm holding it so you can see it but you could put stripes all around the the back of the cat too. Whew, it's kind of tricky because he's still kind of wet. Maybe if I hold him by his ear. You could put the stripes going all the way, all the way around the back if you wanted to. Or they could just go halfway. And you don't have to do blue stripes. You can do whatever stripes you want. Or you can put designs on your cat. I'm gonna make his tail kind of stripey. You could put polka dots on your cat or stripes, whatever you want to do. I think I'll put some stripes on his head. Maybe, let's see. Like that. Okay, so now he's got some blue stripes makes them a little more interesting and I've got orange paint on my fingers all right I think I'm gonna give I'm gonna work on those pupils now so I'm gonna get my thin brush and get some paint not too gloppy I want to thin it out a little bit I'm gonna outline camera camera woman can you see the eyes uh -huh. okay I'm just gonna very carefully with the tip of my brush very carefully go around that eye some more paint for the other eye. I'm trying to do it so you can see it, but then I can't see it very well. All right, it looks like 
A ghost cat. We gotta give him some pupils. And there's one. And there's the other. How's he looking? Looking cute? Now, you know, I always like to give little shine spots to creatures like this to make them look more alive. So I'm gonna clean my tiny brush and get some white paint on it. I'm just gonna put a little dab of white paint in each pupil, and maybe a little on his nose. And I said he'd have whiskers, didn't I? So maybe we'll just get a little white paint and just do some really just with the very tip of the brush. Oops, got a little bit blue. We'll just do a few whiskers. And try not to get it in the blue paint. Okay, you can see him better than I can. Let me let me take a look at that guy. He's pretty cute. <laughs> so as you can see, um, they're not exactly the same because of the bottles that I use, but that's kind of cool. You can make yourself a whole herd of cats. What is a, what do you call a bunch of cats? A litter? A whole litter of cats? <laughs> if you wanted to, but you definitely want to wait till they're dry. This one's still really sticky. I could not paint it until it's totally dry. So you definitely want to wait till it's dry to paint it. But now I've got these cute little cats and they stand up by themselves. It's great. So hopefully yours will turn out and you'll enjoy making some paper mache animals. <laughs>